The Lord be with you. From Psalm 25, lead me in your truth and teach me your way, for you are the God of my salvation. Good morning and welcome to worship at First Presbyterian Church. Whether you're joining us here in person or via live stream, we trust that you will experience the love of God as you worship with us this morning. We continue to broadcast our worship services, worship services on our website. They're also broadcast on KREN Radio on 8.30 each Sunday morning. We send out our announcements and our uh, prayer chain via our email. We encourage you to pray for the people on our prayer chain. Today at 11.30, we'll be having our weekly fellowship time via a Zoom link. You should have received the email about that. If you didn't, our, the email, the Zoom number is 849-1525-7249. Today is Scout Sunday, when we recognize the Troop 116 and the, Boy, and the Girl Scout Troop that also uses our building for its meetings. We're glad that you are all here, the Scouts, their families, under the leadership of their Scoutmaster, Lionel Kelly. We're excited about you participating in worship. If you were a Boy Scout or a Girl Scout at some time in your life or a leader, would you raise your hand? Boys, look around. You can see how uh, prevalent and how important scouting is into our community. And thank you for your, the, the ministry that you do. T this week, we'll be starting our Lenten Bible study called Who Is This Man? It'll be on Tuesday at 7 o'clock. If you didn't receive the materials yet, you still can. There's some copies in our parlor. I've ordered some more books. They'll be here by Tuesday. So look for an email today with the Zoom link for that. You also had a great church summit yesterday where many of our leaders participated. It was a wonderful time of exploring and dreaming of how our church can grow in the future. So we ask for God's blessing upon that continued work that we're going to do. Pastor Dan, do you have the birthdays and anniversaries? This week, we are wishing a happy birthday and celebrating with Logan Finnegan, Roger Rapp, Stephen Roberts, John Brown, and Tammy Nowak. Are there any other birthdays that I missed that are coming up this week? Well, happy birthday. Are there any anniversaries that you would like to announce for this week? And now may the peace of Christ be with you. Hi, my name is Colin Peters, and I am a Star Scout. There is none like you, O Lord, nor are there any works like yours. All nations shall bow down before you, O God, and shall glorify your name. For you alone are God. For you are great and do wondrous things. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Let us pray. We praise you for creating this world in all beauty, for redeeming the world through Christ our Lord, and for sending us the gift of your spirit to encourage, instruct, and sustain us. We long for your spirit to work among us now, to inspire our praise, to challenge us with your truth, and to equip us for your service in your world. Amen.
Hi, my name is Connor Fisbeck, and I'm an Eagle Scout. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with God and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Gracious God, we humbly confess our sins and ask your mercy. We have not loved you with a pure heart, nor have we loved our neighbor as ourselves. We have not done justice, loved kindness, or walked humbly with you, our God. Have mercy on us in your great compassion. Cleanse us from our sin. Create in us a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. Restore to us the joy of your salvation and sustain us with your bountiful spirit through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We now offer this time for silent personal confession. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Amen. Hello, my name is Liam Rimley, and I'm a Star Scout. Please join me in the prayer for illumination. Lord God, may your word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Old Testament lesson for today will be Psalms 107, verses 1 through 9. Listen now to the word of God. I'll give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. And let the redeemed of the Lord say so, those he redeemed from trouble. And they gathered from the lands, from the east and from the west, and from the north and from the south. Some wandered in desert wastes, finding no way to an inhabited town. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted within them. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He led them by straight way to an inhabited town. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love and his wonderful works to humankind, for he satisfies the thirsty and the hungry he fills with good things. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Our New Testament lesson this morning comes from Mark chapter 6, verses 30 through 44. Listen now to the word of God. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they heard there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When it grew late, his disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now very late. Send them away so they may go into the surrounding country and villages and buy them something for themselves to eat. But he answered them, You give them something to eat. They said to him, Are we to go and buy two hundred denarii worth of bread and give it to them to eat? And he said to them, How many loaves have you? Go and see. When they had found out, they said, Five and two fish. Then he ordered them to get all the people to sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in groups of hundreds and of fifties. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to his disciples to set before the people. And he divided the two fish among them all. And all ate and were filled. And they took up twelve baskets full of broken pieces and of the fish. Those who had eaten in the loaves numbered five thousand men. The word of the Lord. I'd like to invite all the children to come down in front on the side for a time for children. Have a seat right here on the front pew on this side. We can spread out. There's plenty of room there. Why don't you sit right over there? There we go. Spread out just a little bit. There we go. Well, good morning, boys and girls. That was okay. That was okay. I want you to look over here at the communion table. Can you see what's on it? Who can tell me what's on it? What's on it? Bread and a piece of fish. Now, why would we have bread and fish on our communion table? Why do you think? Okay, I like that. What do you do with bread and fish? What can you do? Do you play with them or what do you do? What do you do? You eat them, right? Well, what did you hear happen in the story today that I just read you? What did Jesus do? Anybody? He took what? What did he do? Right, he had a little bit of bread and a little bit of fish. And how many people did he feed? Did he feed five people? No. Did he feed a hundred people? Did he feed a thousand people? No. He fed five thousand people. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? Well, today in worship, in our, in your church, in your children's church, you're going to receive a fish bank like that. Do you see the fish on there? And you're also going to receive a card. What to do with this fish bank? You're going to take it home. And you're going to put it on your counter in your kitchen somewhere. And parents, we invite you to help your kids with this. If you're online, you can get one. And then for seven weeks, you're going to put coins in there. The first week says something like, put a coin in there for every bed in your house. How many of you sleep in a bed? Yeah, you all sleep in a bed, so we put coins in there. One for each bed that's in our house. And the next week, it says, put a coin in there for every pair of shoes you have. How many of you have shoes that you're wearing? Yep, yep. So we're going to put coins in there for that. Then the third week, it might say, put a coin in there for every electrical outlet in your house. Do you have electrical outlets in your house? Isn't that cool? Yeah. So we put coins in there too. You're going to do this for seven weeks. And when you're done, there's going to be a lot of money in there. You're going to bring it back. You know what we do with these? We're going to help feed people. Just like Jesus fed 5,000 on that day, we're going to take this, we're going to send it out to people who buy food to feed people. Isn't that good news? Let's pray. God, we thank you for Jesus. 
for his feeding us, feeding us with your food of your word and feeding us with our daily bread. Help us to help others. And we ask this all in his name. Amen. Okay, go with Miss Ashley. Will you pray with me? O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of every heart here be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, my name is Bob Thompson, and I am an Eagle Scout. This is Scout Sunday. The Scouts, the Sunday that we recognize the Scouts and leaders of Troop 116. We recognize that the programs that they have here in our worship, in our saint, in our church, and the benefits of scout programs for young people. The goal of scouting is to help raise young men and women into adults, to help them be successful in their lives. But the purpose of the Christian church is similar. The ministry of the church is to help all people, young and those of us who aren't so young anymore to grow as disciples of Jesus Christ, to help us be successful disciples in faith. Our mission is to baptize and strengthen disciples. Well, today I'd like to refer to the Scout Oath and the Scout Slogan as we look at this scripture from Mark and discover what it has to teach us about being successful adults, about successful disciples of Jesus Christ. The Scout Oath says, we are to do our duty to God. Another phrase in the oath says, we are to help other people at all times. And the scout slogan is to do a good deed daily. What we will see in this scripture passage is Jesus teaching the disciples to follow these same three teachings. As we examine this well-known story of the feeding of the 5,000, we'll see Jesus challenging us as disciples and as scouts to meet the needs of the world through faith in him. Well, this is also the first Sunday of Lent, the time of the Christian year when we need to grow closer to God through our faith. May our passage today help strengthen our faith in God and empower us through our faith in Jesus Christ to help the world. The feeding of the 5,000 is one of the best known scripture passages, best known stories in the New Testament. We're familiar with the miracle because it's contained in all four of the Gospels. This alone demonstrates how important it is for our faith. As we look at all four of the Gospels, we get a clearer picture of what happened on that day. Mark tells us that there was 5,000 men who were fed. The Gospel of Matthew adds that there were women and children also there who were fed. So the number could have been as, maybe as, as high as 10,000 people. The Gospel of John mentions that it was a little boy who brought his lunch and gave it to Jesus in order to feed the people. All the Gospels are similar in telling us that Jesus looked at this large crowd in front of him and he saw a great need before him. He had compassion on them and he welcomed them and then he met their needs. Jesus met their needs in three ways. He taught them the word of God, feeding their souls. He healed them, taking care of their physical needs. And he provided food for them, taking care of their hunger. And in the feeding of the 5,000, Jesus teaches us, as disciples and as scouts, three important lessons about our daily duty to God. The first lesson today I'll summarize from a phrase in the scout oath, to help other people at all times. As disciples and as scouts, when we see a need in the world, when we see people who are hungry, we are called to help meet that need. When the disciples looked at the crowd, they saw maybe 10,000 people who had to be fed. As Jesus looked at the crowd, he saw before him sheep without a shepherd. 
Now, I've never owned sheep. I've never been a shepherd. But I've been told that without a shepherd, sheep are sort of vulnerable and lost. We can imagine the helpless and hopeless look that Jesus saw in the faces of the crowd that day. If you don't mind me saying, it was a bad situation. <laughs> the disciples are concerned for their physical needs. Jesus is concerned about the more important spiritual needs. So he begins to teach them, we are told. The most important need for anyone is to know about God, to hear about God's love for them. Disciples are to help other people hear about God's love and experience God's abundant love. Like Jesus, when we look at the world, we can see a great need and have compassion. The compassion should call us to action, to help other people at all times. Following Jesus' example, we need to remember that teaching people that God loves them is the first step in meeting their needs. Their spiritual needs need to be met as well as their physical needs. When we see the great needs of the world, we are called to help. It's easy to help sometimes. The Boy Scouts were started after a scout in England helped Baden Powell find his way on a foggy evening. There are hundreds of ways that we can help others. If we look around our neighborhoods and our communities, there are many needs that we can meet. We can help other people at all times. With this recent ice storm that engulfed most of our country, we heard many stories on the news about neighbors helping neighbors, taking food over, sending them some blankets to keep warm, taking them potable water, maybe even sharing some electricity. The disciples have helped many people we see. But at the beginning of our story, the disciples are sort of bragging. If you look at that first verse, they come to Jesus and start telling him about all the things they had done, all the people that they had taught. They're sort of proud of themselves, aren't they? But when we see the larger needs of our community, of our world, we, like the disciples, may wonder, how can we help? How can we accomplish anything with all of these needs? The disciples looked at this great need, the hunger of more than 5,000, maybe 10,000 people, and their first response was, we can't do anything. Are we to go and buy 200 denarii worth of bread? Now, a denarii was a day's wage for a labor. That would have been almost $10,000 in today's terms. Isn't it interesting that 2,000 years later, we still have a problem with hunger? We still have a problem with people having enough food to eat. What does that tell us? First, it tells us that hunger is part of this broken and sinful world that we live in. Jesus came to tell the world that its brokenness is not the way God wants it to be. Jesus came to redeem the world from its sin. This is why Jesus teaching the crowd about God's love is as an important part of feeding them. So they know that God brings healing and satisfaction to their hungry hearts. It is not enough just to give people physical food. They need to be fed spiritual food as well. Second, it also demonstrates that humanity, we can't solve this problem all on our own. We can't solve all the world's problems all the time. But we can help other people all the time. The disciples wanted to give up on the problem. It was too big for them. But Jesus challenged them. You give them something to eat. Christ calls us to tackle the needs we see in front of us, even when they seem impossible. There's a story of a young boy who was walking along a beach after a storm, and the storm had washed thousands upon thousands of starfish up onto the beach. And as he walked along the beach, he'd pick up a starfish, put it back in the water. Then he'd pick up another starfish and put it back in the water. A man came up to him and said, you know, there are tens of thousands of starfish on this beach. I'm afraid you won't really be able to make much of a difference. The young boy picked up another starfish, put it in the water, and replied, it will make a difference to this one. The disciples are called to help the crowd. Jesus calls us to make a difference by helping others at all time even when it's challenging. 
Well, the second lesson from our scripture today is we may not be able to meet the world's needs, but God can through Jesus Christ. Our challenge as disciples and as scouts is to follow Jesus, to do our duty to God. The disciples see a great need in front of them, an impossible problem too big for them. What they don't recognize is the miracle worker standing right next to them in Jesus Christ. We can't solve the problem that sin brings into the world, the world's hunger. The world's hunger for God and the world's physical hunger. God sent Jesus Christ to meet the world's hunger, to know God and to know God's love. And God is also concerned with the world's physical needs. The feeding of the 5,000 demonstrates that God will satisfy our hunger for food as well. Jesus can meet the needs of the world's problems because he cares about the world. Jesus was taking the disciples away on a retreat for some rest, but the crowds follow him. The crowds had heard that Jesus would care for them, and so they naturally flocked to him like sheep without a shepherd. And we are told that he had compassion on them. God has compassion on the great needs of the world, the hurts that are in the world. And out of God's compassion for the needs of the world, God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to meet those needs. God is fulfilling his promise that we heard about in Psalm 107. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed say so, those he redeemed from trouble. They wandered in the desert wastes, finding no way to an inhabited town. Hungry and thirsty, their souls fainting within them. Then they cried to the Lord, and he delivered them from their distress. God hears our cries and responds. Our duty to God is to have faith in Jesus Christ, to trust him for the world's needs, and to obey his commands. The disciples see the crowd and come up with a very practical solution. Send them away. That's what many of us would have come up with. But Jesus challenges them. You need to feed them. And so he takes what the disciples bring him, what the world has to offer, five loaves and two fish. He offers them up to heaven, blesses them, breaks the bread, and then commands the disciples to place them before the people. God takes what little the world has to offer, what we bring him, and from so little, he will provide an abundance for the world. Our duty to God as disciples and as scouts, when we find a need and we can't meet it, is to trust in God and in Jesus Christ. God will meet those needs through the work of his disciples, through their duty to God. Which is the third lesson from this scripture. God needs our help. We can't meet all the world's needs. Jesus can, but God needs our help. The Boy Scout slogan is, do a good deed daily. Jesus told the disciples in this passage, you give them something to eat. The disciples wanted to send them away, to fend them for themselves. Jesus challenges us, do a good deed, give them something to eat. Jesus doesn't waver from his command, but he calls his disciples to obedience, to feed the crowd. Now Jesus probably could have fed the 5,000 all by himself. He could have said, disciples, you just go over and sit on that rock there and watch me take care of this. But he stays with his plan to have the disciples feed the crowd. He says, how many fish do you have? And they return with these small portions. And after blessing what they have brought him, the scripture tells us the disciples serve the people by setting the bread and fish before them. He calls them and us to meet the needs of the world by going out into the world, going out into the crowd. He challenges the disciples to be the church, to do a good deed daily, to help the needs of the world. We can't meet the needs of the world. Jesus can but he needs our help. Our help, our duty to God as scouts and as disciples is to know and serve God by serving the world. Know God through Jesus Christ. See the miracle worker standing in our midst and have faith in him. Serve God by following his commands, giving the world what they need. 
It may seem that we have so little to offer, a small pittance. We can't meet the world's needs with what we have, but we are called to do a good deed daily, to bring what we have, as small as it might seem, bring it to God through Jesus Christ. He will take it, offer it up to heaven, bless it, and use it to fulfill the gospel. There's another oath that the scouts have, and that is to leave no trace. It's the goal to enjoy God's beautiful creation and no leave no trace behind. Well, in our scripture passage today, leave no trace is an important part of the miracle. We are told the disciples went around and picked up 12 baskets of broken bread and fish that were left behind. This demonstrates the abundant generosity of God. Everyone ate. Everyone had their fill. Jesus doesn't just barely feed the people with what he has. The crowd is fed with abundance, so much that they have plenty left over. God sees the needs of the world and provides abundantly for the world. This passage calls us to be faithful disciples and faithful scouts. We are called to help other people at all times, see the needs of the world, and help meet those needs. We are called to be faithful in our duty to God by trusting God, following God, and meet the needs of the world through Jesus Christ. Jesus calls us to have compassion for the world. And we are called to do a good deed daily every day, whenever we can, with the resources we have. We may not be able to see how with so little that we have to can do anything about the world's great problems. But if we bring what we have to God through our faith in Jesus Christ, he will bless what we bring, and through ministry and through service provide abundantly for the world. Amen. Would you stand and join in singing our hymn of response?
Please be seated. I'd like to introduce Steve Hopkins, one of the leaders of Troop 116, for some special awards. Hey, I'm the uh, assistant committee chairman, uh, and uh, I'd like to help, have Norm Soden, which you all know, uh, come help me do these uh, adult awards that are incredibly in, in, uh, important to our, our troop. Uh, I'd also like to have come down Jason Duda, Deb Dolph, Greg Dolph, Phil Telly, Lionel Kelly, and Chuck Burke. Come on down, gentlemen and ladies. The first five of those, the uh, ones that you may not know as well, uh, have been awarded the uh, God and Service Award by their respective churches. This time, Norm, I'd like you to start out with the uh, uh, God and Service Awards. The, for we can start off on this. Uh, Jason Duda. Uh, Jason uh, has been awarded this by the uh, Cheyenne Hills Church. Uh, then he's got uh, Deb Dolph and Greg Dolph. They've been awarded this. Uh, by their church, the Cheyenne Hill, che North Cheyenne church, Christian Church. Uh, then we have Phil Telly, uh, who's been awarded this. Uh, Phil's there in the middle. Uh, Meadowbrook Church is his home church, and uh, they were most ha happy to help that. And finally, and is uh, Lionel Kelly. Lionel, our, our six-time Scout Master of the Year, deserves this more than anybody else through his, uh, and he was awarded this by the Frontier United Methodist Church. Uh, last and uh, maybe most importantly of all, we have Chuck Burke, who's being awarded his 50 year Veteran Scouter Award. Uh, we get, uh, Lionel has, his, uh, has a pin for him there, and, uh, uh, and I think you have a ribbon there, and Norm Soden has a presentation, the certificate letter for him. Uh, we appreciate all the work that uh, Chuck keeps doing with us, and uh, uh, we have a great bunch of leaders here. And uh, as you can see, it's a community-wide effort that they put in for our, our young people. Thank you all very much. Isaac Peterson, I'm an Eagle Scout. Please join me in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in the God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under, who was sacrificed dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and saith in the right hand of Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Reverend Diana Hartman and I invite you now into a time of prayer as we raise our concerns and our joys up to the Lord. Let us pray. Praise to you, O God most holy, uncreated light, that our morning prayers rise to you as blooming flowers turn to meet the sun. 
May we meet the adventure of this day open to the opportunities you give to us to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ. May we be so filled with the Holy Spirit that peace and compassion radiate from us to bless others so that they are touched by your glory. Enrich our senses with the beauty of your world, our minds with the wonder at your ways, and our spirits with gratitude for all that you prepare from the redemption of creation through Jesus Christ the Son. Pierce our hearts with love, especially for those in any kind of need, so that we are moved to help where we can and moved to cry out for help if the need is greater than we can answer. Spare others the consequences of our sin and help us to be reconciled with those we have harmed in the past. Make us slow to anger and quick to forgive and quicker still to confess our faults. In all things, may we trust in you. Let us finish the day as we begin it in your care, in your gentle, merciful, loving hands Beloved and blessed, triune God, whom we worship and adore now and forever. Holy One, we want to be the sheep of your pasture. Care for us, feed us, and lead us, we pray. Once we are strengthened by your presence, raise us up to be shepherds ourselves, who tend to those who fear and dismay so that our lives may reflect our Good Shepherd, Jesus Christ. Triune God, Shepherd of your people, you provide for us far more than we expect or imagine. Calm our fears, speak peace to us, lead us beyond ourselves. O Creator of rain and sun and soil, ruler of nations, we thank you for the abundance of the earth. We know there is enough food to feed everyone alive today. Help us find ways to distribute it equ equitably. We are grateful that there are cures and vaccines for the most common diseases, especially the COVID-19. May all who want these vaccines have access. We praise you for the witness of Jesus Christ who showed no less for power or riches. Help us to walk in his way. Fill the world with the spirit of Christ so that food, medicine, and peace flow as freely as the river of life from the throne of the Lamb. We pray for those who have no peace, for children, women, and men, whose homes have been destroyed by war, fire, flood, tornado, and other disasters. We pray for those who have been devastated by the winter storms, freezing temperatures, and utility malfunctions. We pray for those whose minds have been damaged by what they have seen or felt or done, who are hungry or thirsty or ill because they are refugees or poor, or underpaid, or trapped in human trafficking. We pray for those who are suffering from COVID. Ease their suffering and bless them with a peace beyond all understanding. We pray for those whom you have called to be your peacemakers, leaders of governments and businesses, and non-governmental organizations leaders of the church and scholars and scientists and educators, community organizers and citizens, healthcare workers and first responders, and everyone of sound mind and body who can bear the burden of the weak. Give us strength and courage and faith to trust Jesus Christ and to be Christ-like for the good of the creation you are redeeming and to the glory of the one who redeems all. We pray for the scouts who are here today. May they be blessed and grow in faith day by day. 
Give them curious minds and generous hearts that they may serve you, support one another, and be a caring presence in the world. And be with those who lead and teach them. May they be blessed with faith, wisdom, patience, and love. O oh God, the strength of the weak and the comfort of sufferers, Mercifully hear our prayers for Celia Shadell, Sheila Lutz, Bob Bernhardt, Mary K. Bonenplus, Jared Dilly, Jean Marie Seitz, Bob Wenske, Alan White, David Lopez Sr., Diane Peterson, Heather Smith, and Aaron Turpin and all those on our prayer list and those in our hearts. Grant your servants the help of your power that their sickness may be turned into health and sorrow into joy. Compassionate God, comfort those who mourn with the great power of your love. In their grief and confusion, help them find peace in the knowledge of your loving mercy to all your children and guide them, give them light to guide them into the assurance of your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, with you and the Holy Spirit, we worship now and forever. Amen. And now let us pray together as Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. With thankfulness, we give in gratitude and joy. With prayerfulness, we give in sacrifice and love. With hopefulness, we give in commitment to God. We invite you during the offertory to prepare your offering. You may place your offering in the offering plate as you leave. Donate through our website or send your offering through the mail.
please join me in the prayer of dedication. Generous God, source of all goodness and charity, your ear is always open to our needs. When we cry to you, you are faithful and provide for us. With joy we bring our thanksgiving. For all your mercies, we return to you from our abundance. All that we give, we dedicate to you, your glory. All that we keep, we commit to your care. For we are only stewards of your bounty. Bless what we give and what we keep, for all is your creation. Amen. blessing to have the scouts and their families here in worship with us today. The scouts did a great job, didn't they? <laughs> Normally we would enjoy some fellowship time with the scouts and you always bring a cake for us to eat, but unfortunately this year we can't do that. So to keep us safe, I'm going to instruct you after the benediction for you to sit down and please remain seated until one of our ushers uh, dismisses you. And then we ask you to leave immediately out to your cars uh, rather than to fellowship here in the church. Now you have been fed. You have been fed by God's word and filled with his love. Carry that now out into the world, helping others at all times and doing our duty to God. Now may God bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace now and forever. Amen. Please be seated.